to circle back to the running backs real quick agreed with what you're saying you know about the volatile volatility of the position um now i'm not sure how long you guys have been playing dynasty i'm not trying to sound like the old man uh on, on my lawn i'm 100 percent with you with receivers right now you should be drafting receivers right now it's a passing league potentially less injuries the values stays pretty strong on them um but the problem is is that forever that we had a group of running backs who stayed in this league who were always at the top of these drafts and we just haven't got the replacements yet to quite be up there so right now you know i used to say i'm all i'm going to be all in on the running backs for a while you know four or five years ago now the value got away from the running backs and people were drafting them too high and they weren't quite maybe what they wanted to be maybe outside of jt which you know jt got hurt this year but i'm still in on jt i'll take jt in the first round at the end of the first without any hesitation um because it is very it's a valuable position the top couple of them are, are extremely valuable um but we just we we haven't got you know we had the class with dobbins and acres and you know then miles sanders and montgomery and ceh and and you know we just haven't you, normally you get classes to kind of come in and and sort of replace all those stalwarts that were the the top of them we just haven't quite had that now maybe this year we can finally get there but you know, maybe we're about to get a nice little resurgence of five or six running backs who stay up at the top. You know, I'm not saying that Swift can't get back up there. I don't know that Najee needs to be back up to where he was. Javante, I think, can get back up there. You know, Brees can be up there. I think JT can stay up there. Obviously, Bijan's going to be up there. So I think before we know it, if this class is, is maybe as good and as deep as we think we are, th I think there'll be a decent amount of running backs in the top three picks again. Uh, I think it's just a yeah. matter of that the landscape – kind of keep shifting and you need you can't get stuck in that hey i'm a running back guy i want running backs i do want running backs i like running backs i think running backs are, are extremely valuable look the the first rookie running back that comes off the board is at two four now i took him i don't think he would have gotten past jay wayne here who was a couple picks past me or maybe somebody else but the, the first rookie wide receiver off the board is garrett wilson almost around later so when they hit the value goes up so fast and so i mean kenny walker was up there too so like when 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 the when the rb hits the value changes so fast um and yeah there's still some volatility in there and i'm not saying that it's all running back all the time i'm saying you got to play the value that's on the board i think at some point here we will shift back to having enough running backs that you know when we get through the th three or four rounds it'll be a lot more green boxes if you're drafting on sleeper um than currently is i, th I think you will see a, a shift back at some point where there is more running backs that we trust we just all the all the ones that are they're 26 27 28 nobody wants any of those guys and then we don't really trust any of the exactly. other ones outside two or three um sure. because they haven't really earned it um so i think that will be coming back um and I, but i don't think you guys are, are wrong in the approach that you're currently having i just kind of wanted to and throw what my thinking is on why the running back position is down a little bit, but wide receivers are never going to be a bad pick. Yeah. And, 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 you know, talking about running back. Yeah. I'm well aware that four or five years ago, Dalvin cook was consistently going in the first round. And those guys that, you know, have transitioned into being older running backs, but have continued to produce at a high level. I mean, yeah, those guys were going. And if you drafted them there, you're not necessarily super disappointed of what you got. Looking at, I think there are two main things that I would highlight here with running backs. The first one is how the running back usage in the NFL has shifted. Efficiency sure. is a lot more important now because teams are just shifting to using very widespread committees at this point. Like, right. I mean, where you would have more workhorse backs, like those guys that came up in that and that are like in the 27, 28 range now. A lot, I mean, those guys in their primes were getting well, most of their snaps. And even, you know, with Brees Hall, I think when, with, as an example, even these younger running backs, I think you're going to see Brees Hall, you know, have some Michael Carter carries in there. I, I don't think James Robinson or Donovan Knight are going to do anything. And I think Brees Hall is going to continue to be efficient just because of how good of a player he is, uh, because of how elite he is. But I think that's going to factor into it. And the other thing here is, you know, I... I'm personally, like, if I'm looking at a running back in the first round, I highly doubt that there aren't 10 quarterbacks and two receivers that I wouldn't feel safer about taking, even if the running backs are worth that much. Like, 
I, it's not necessarily well, it comes for me. Down to the like, positional scarcity of those guys, and there's an, a positional advantage. I have to start two of them. You know, it's no, not really all that different than a tight end. If I can get one of the ones that are up in the top, I, there's, there's a weekly advantage to me if I can get a really – now, there's, you can play zero RB, and if you smash that out of the park, you can fucking win a ton with that. Like, I've, I've won all the ways that you can win, so I'm not against any yeah. – I'm against drafting right. what makes the most sense and not getting pigeonholed into really taking any position – um, but so I, I, my recent draft, I took, um, Trevor Lawrence in the first, and then I took Brees Hall in the second. Why did I take? I mean, I'm very comfortable taking a running back high, you know, as long as I've got one, at least one elite QB, I think. So, so for me, I just, I never see, and you're right. I think in a, I think it is about scarcity at the position, but I think in a super flex league, you're always going to want to lock up at least one elite QB in the first round. I think there will always be at least 10 of them. So it's just, at that point, it's just preference. And I would just prefer to lock one up. But that being said, I like where Brees Hall is going right now because I do think if Brees Hall comes back and he looks fine and I anticipate that he will, then, you know, he's going to skyrocket back up to the first round. He's going to, he's going to, I think if Brees Hall hadn't got hurt, he'd be going in the top six picks. Oh yeah, he'd be going ahead of JT. Exactly. Yep, he would. And he has been in most drafts. I mean, JT, like I love, I love taking JT back into the second round. That's a crazy value. We're Colts fans. We know how good he is. He, number one, he played behind a crappy offensive line in a crappy system, and he had a bum ankle. Everyone knew he was going to run the ball because they couldn't do anything else. scheming was not, it just was as good of an offensive coach that Wright can be. I mean, it was bad there for a while. So I'm all in on that. And, you know, in the, in this second round, I do, I think running backs are valuable too. I mean, I'm smashing, he's smashing Austin Eckler in the fourth. That's crazy. Like, I mean, Austin Eckler is scoring out of his mind. And people are shorting him because, you know, he's old. I, I, I don't get it. And yeah. I, I, I know. And, and so now the thing is, and I like doing this in these startups, especially this year. This has been a key part of our startup strategy. A lot of these old running backs, Derek Henry, Aaron Jones, uh, Nick Chubb, Nick Joe Chubb, Mixon, Joe Mc- they're all Connor. going like past the seventh round. And in the case of like Aaron Jones, like the 10th, James Connor is going like in the 12th. They yeah. both have, I like, it, it's crazy, but they, yeah, I mean, in this draft that we did, I got Aaron Jones and James Conner back to back 10, five and 11, eight. And they literally have the same fantasy upside next year as some of the guys going here in the third round as ETN, as Kenneth Walker, because I mean, James Conner on a points per game basis this year was RB nine. Yeah. yeah. So, and yeah, we, we might get into late round values and some values and he'll be certainly on my list uh, here. So yeah, right, I agree. Right. Yeah. And, yeah, and again, if I mean, if your prediction here is is we're going to see some running backs, I think in, you're right. By the way, to you're right. Come and replace these old guys like that would make me be even more comfortable. Maybe uh, in some drafts, potentially waiting to draft running backs until those later rounds where you're still getting the older guys like Aaron Jones, James Conner, Joe Mixon, Nick Chubb, because you're so confident in these next draft classes um, having you know a bunch of. RBs that are going to be producing at a high level and replacing those guys. So yeah, um, that's, I, that's another thing I think that to, to look into is like, Hey, if, if you can get these old RBs for cheap and then you can get these real great young RBs in the second round of rookie drafts, like I, I think it's worth exploring and, and worth a shot. If you're not comfortable taking a running back whose value you don't really like in the second round of startups. So uh, that's, you know, something that I'm kind of weighing and, and, and looking at right now. You've got to, I mean, you've got to kind of fluctuate your strategy based on what the market's doing. So right now, yeah. I mean, that's actually, and so it's actually funny, you know, while we're not comfortable taking a running back in the first round, I'm pretty much comfortable taking a running back anywhere else, like I said. And in fact, I found myself doing it more often than not because the, the popular thing now is because Najee and Swift and Javante have dropped three rounds in ADP. Now nobody wants yep. to take them. So right. uh, it's, it's, it's going to be play the market. And if, if I get to a point where, you know, these running backs jump back up and I can't get these older running backs in late rounds anymore, because my, my preferred strategy, like they're not going to, they're I, not going to, you're going to, you're going to be good. You know, <laughs> we saw this all I, last year too. They were just a few rounds higher than they were in this draft right here. So it's, they're right, not going, they're going to be right there. Yeah. And I mean, look, look at Najee Harris consistently going in the fifth round here. I mean, we were known, um, I wouldn't say haters of Najee Harris. We we didn't really hate him. We, we compared him we, to Trent Richardson as a joke, and everybody got really mad about it. But I, <laughs> yeah, the, the thing with Najee, I, I mean, is he has the volume. His usage went down, but he, he became more efficient in that offense and in Pittsburgh once his usage went down. 
And I, I think he is not, he's one of those RBs that's not being drafted at his ceiling right now. I mean, he was going in the first round mm-hmm. last year. So right. should he ever be going there again? No, but his ceiling is RB4 because he was RB4 as a rookie. And like, I don't think we can forget that. Yeah. And just let him fall to the fifth round. It, to, to, at that point, he's a smash for me. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you, you lost, you lost obviously the, the big Ben checkdowns this year, which near the end of the season, you started seeing, you know, Pickett kind of targeting a little bit more Najee and that you lost, you know, some of the scoring opportunities and a little bit of the volume. I'm okay with losing some of the volume to keep him. He was obviously to keep him a little more fresh. They need an offensive coordinator yeah. change. They need some offensive line help. And, and obviously you need him to not come into the season fucking hurt. Um, and I think I think that's yeah. all leaning towards he had a nice back end of the season in those couple of those. I think the Ravens game to end the season or maybe it was the Bengals. My man was running out of his fucking mind and looking great. Um, and I think, you know, I think it's well said that, you know, there's he's not even anywhere near the ceiling at five, six there. I think, you know, you can clean up on on running back values. Um currently and not have to spend you know the higher round pick which is a reason why you know i'll take Brees pretty much in the second and maybe kenny walker um but other than that like i'm probably steering away for another round or two until we can kind of get into those guys um so you know yeah. it's me being a heavy running back guy doesn't mean that I, you know I, my strategies have to change because it's not worth it. it. The value isn't there, and and I can get the better value a little lower. I guess I, I'm I'm interested to kind of talk about you know since you guys are maybe a little more interested in getting the older running backs a li- little bit later. How do how do you I guess depending on how the values fall early, how does your draft strategy change or what is your draft strategy going in knowing that maybe you are targeting some of these later running backs or older running backs a little later? I, I, I think that is crucial how I've been building my dynasty teams. I think you've only done one startup, right? Like I've done, I think right. I've done quite a few more than you. So, right. So my start, I, I, as it sits right now, as, as the market sits right now, and this could change, my favorite strategy is to lock up one or two QBs early to get those elite wide receivers. So in the first five or six rounds, like I can lock up guys that I know from a value standpoint, from like a market value standpoint are not going to depreciate in value or going to hold their value really well. Guys I can build around guys will have good trade value if I need to move off of them. So that's really just setting a solid, like safe conservative style investing value foundation for my team with those quarterbacks and wide receivers. So because I know I'm getting those running backs and because I know I can get Joe Mixon in the six, I can build a team with, Patrick Mahomes and Dak Prescott, and then I can add a T Higgins, and then go and add a Godwin, and then you know then go get an elite tight end, Pittman, and get Goddard or Kittle, get, get, get Goddard or Kittle, or even Andrews is falling in there, and, yeah. and then I can still go in 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 the sixth round and get Mixon. I you know I can go in the seventh round and get Chubb. I can go in the tenth round and get Aaron Jones. I mean, at, look if you look at it at that point from a production standpoint, you are just absolutely stacked, and I think it's really important. to to take advantage of it. Now there's kind of a loophole to where if you draft the right way with the way that the market sits, you can come out and have a crazy contending team the first year that you do it and you don't even have to move your picks. So right. I think a lot of people right now, like, you know, actually this is pretty common in dynasty. People are just so focused on the future and youth. like, I think, I think you go in and you do both. You build the future with quarterbacks and wide receivers and then you take these running backs that you know are going to produce at a high level and you go win this year and for years to come. So, I mean, with as the little amount that you have invested in running backs, you can easily just buy new ones when they're that cheap again, assuming that the market doesn't shift to where they're getting more expensive. They probably will. But at the current moment, you're building some pretty crazy contending teams in these startups because of that, how that value is falling. So, yeah, I, I would, I would agree. Do, do you have anything to, to add to that of, of how, how you're thinking about them or how you're thinking about the whole process in general there? No, I, I, I think pretty similarly uh, uh, around those, those lines. I think one of the guys that I've been targeting a lot recently has been TJ Hawkinson. We just, we're, we're going to come out with a video here on the scarcity of tight ends, the bare landscape and how much of an advantage it is really to have one of those top six tight ends and then Kelsey just being off the charts. But yeah. um, I, I think I, this, this startup that I just did about a week ago, I, I was definitely very experimental with running backs. I took a big risk. And the first RB I took off my board was James Conner in the 11th. I didn't touch RB before that. 
mm-hmm. I ended up getting, I think, Diggs, Godwin, Hollywood, Hawkinson, Kyler Murray, Deshaun Watson, uh, Mike Evans, and D Hop were, were was really my core core team there. Um, and then James Conner being my number one running back, getting Fournette later too. I think people are pretty low on him because he will produce somewhere wherever he ends up next year. Um, and it's, I'm definitely putting faith in my ability to either buy older running backs the following year that are worth dang near nothing in ADP or investing in one of those with the RBs in the first or second rounds yeah. to, to replace yeah. those ones that are going to inevitably or, or will die off on my roster probably this year. So um, I'm, I'm co- and part of that, part of that reason that, that I did that is because I made it to the semifinals as what I thought was a rebuild <laughs> in one of my leagues. I made it to the semifinals because I invested in Trevor Lawrence. I bought Tua in the off season for dirt cheap. And then I went and I went crazy on receiver. I gave up all of my rookie picks from last year. I gave up my 2022 101. I got AJ Brown. I have Michael Pittman, Devontae Smith, Chris Olave, Amon Ross St. Brown, and Devo Samuel. And like, that's a ridiculous receiving core. And I, right. I did it because I, I bought all those guys when they were low in ADP. And that's sort of what I'm, what I'm leaning towards right now on this league that we just did. So pretty similar to what Avery was talking about. But I, of course, I, I get gunning for those running backs up, up top because they are, I, I mean, they are invaluable for what, how, what they can produce to an extent. So. Yeah, I um <clears throat> on a on a startup last year, um, I kind of took a, a semi similar approach to kind of what you were just saying. Um, I basically the only running back I did draft was was Brees Hall. Um, so I I, I took Brees Hall, yeah. and then I came back later and I got you know James Cook and I got Michael Carter just because I had you know maybe Brees and you know we don't know we didn't exactly know what was going to happen there. But other than that, you know, my, my next running back was like TDP and, you know, just just a bunch of wild cards at running back. Now, once I did that, I figured I was either going to trade for older running backs in season or it's the first year I can, I'm OK with eating shit the first year. And, you know, and then coming out and basically all I did was grab as many first round picks as I could. And by what the way I you know kind of went about that was drafting a couple of quarterbacks. You know, I, I, I took even I took, I did take Zach Wilson cause it was an auction and he was going for like two bucks. I grabbed Zach Wilson. I turned Zach Wilson into DJ Moore, you know, after a few weeks for somebody that needed a quarterback and was over DJ Moore, which, you know, right. as long as, like I said, it's, it's a if shooters got to You got to keep shooting. If, if you're trading, right. you know, you just yeah. got to keep people are mad, whatever. doesn't matter. Just keep throwing out trades. If you actually want to, you know, really get something done. And then I came through and I basically took up, uh, you know, I, I anchored my wide receivers with Waddle DK, um, Ayuk, uh, Jerry, Judy. So I got some older, young, I got some young, good guys. And then, you know, basically just took as many rookie wide receivers as I could and then use those as currency to then try to trade as they started hitting trade into getting multiple first round picks to then build my running back room up out of the draft where they're going to be the cheapest. And I basically bought a bunch of cheaper rookie wide receivers as my currency to kind of move forward. So, you know, uh, it's, it still ended up with Olave, Jamison Williams and Christian Watson on this team as, as my rookies. And I sold off a bunch of the other ones. Um, yeah. So, you know, I, 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 and I have Jahan Dotson. I also have David Bell and Tolbert and Sky Moore on there. Those guys didn't hit and nobody wanted anything to do with them, but they were pretty cheap. And, you know, so you're able to kind of move around and I traded, I eventually did. I traded Kenny Pickett and and Algier for uh, for Olave, you know, f- mid midway through the season. Um, so somebody was desperate for a quarterback again. So you know, quarterbacks. Ken's um, to say that I'm against the quarterbacks, like I was saying before. Like I drafted, I got Lawrence, Dak, Carr, Pickett. I had Zach Wilson. So you know, I came out of there with a whole bunch of quarterbacks and used those as currency as well, and, and just basically faded a position, which was running back because I think it's the easiest to fade right now. Um, yeah. So you know, right, right there along with that thinking, and I think this team right here is is going to be super young. I have the ability to buy old running backs if I want to, and in this draft, I can come through and basically just try to collect, you know, the Sean Tucker's, the 
Millers, the you know the Charbonnets. Maybe I'm not going to get Bijan, but I can I can take four or five shots at at some other running backs trading back out of the first. Um, you know, trading all through. I just got a lot of currency and a lot of options to do a lot of different things. Um, so you know, I, I agree with you, and this is coming from a guy who was staunch in his running back love. Um, right. But you know <laughs> that that's what the market is dictating right now. So that's what you got to do. Yeah. Yeah, but and buying those rookie wide receivers is one of our favorite strategies that we've been preaching all the time, all day and night right now. I mean, you're talking these these twenty twenty two wide receivers only two of them, Sky Moore and Jalen Tolbert, actually de- decreasing in ADP after the right. rookie season. And I, I mean, guys that even even gotten on the field yet, Jamison Williams going up dang near three rounds right. for, for doing nothing. Like just, yeah. just go get them. It doesn't matter if you believe in them or not. Chances are you have an 80% chance that they're going to at least maintain value. And if you're uncomfortable after the rookie season, punt and, and get what they were worth a year ago, which was a first or early second round pick. <laughs> right. So, and maybe even more for something, you know, maybe you get plus yeah, for absolutely. Yeah. You know. Because chances are, if you don't believe in this guy and you're just willing to get, you know, the same value for what he was worth a year before, you're actually going to get more because someone else is going to be higher on him than you are and they'll overpay. Agreed. Yeah, Jamison Williams is, is going to be that guy that's you know, really, we think. So, yeah. yeah, I've been, I'd been trying to sell Christian Watson in that league all like right when he first came on and nobody wanted any part of him because it was just kind of some blow up games. And then there's, yeah. a, there's, there's a trade deadline in that league, which I hate, um, you know, yeah. which is silly in <laughs> dynasty. Um, but then, you know, after that, of course, everybody's like, damn, you know, should have should have taken that trade. You know, I, I was just trying to get a first for him because it's an auction draft. So you get your money converted into cash um, right. when, okay. when the auction rookie draft comes in. So, you know, I wasn't even, you know, people are like, oh, he's not worth the first. And then, you know, now it's like if you offered me a first for him, I probably would just fucking keep him and 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 probably need a little more from you from, you know, obviously tapered yep. off there at yeah, the end. But, you know, at this point, I. I was just, I got him to sell to get back a first. That was what I had in mind going in. So that's what I was okay with getting. And now at this point, it's like, all right, well, fuck it. We made it through the season at this point. I'm, you know, maybe we get into the draft and I can, I can get, I can get that plus. And, you know, I don't know how the Aaron Rodgers news is, which way that's going to affect Christian Watson. Um, yeah. We're not really sure, but um, no. I, I find, I think, I think Rodgers is potentially back with, you know, two guys in, in, in Watson and, and and Romeo who are you know proving to be decent players like I think now that now that he maybe has a little bit of rapport and some confidence that hey we do have some okay weapons here you know maybe, maybe it's a, a selling point plus you know 50 million is a decent amount of money 